All right, hello and welcome back to MMT TV. Stefan Arnio here. And it's been 10 months since you've been on the show. And a lot's changed in that time. You've been traveling the world a lot. You've been meeting crazy people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you've changed your business strategy to flipping houses. So what's, uh, what's inspired all of this change? Where do you want me to start, Sean? I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, let's start at uh, switching from single-family houses to flipping or single-family rentals to flipping? Okay, well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I kind of smartened up a little bit, Sean. I mean, there's lots of ways to build a, a real estate business. And one thing that happens if you start to take on a lot of single-family homes is eventually you get a lot of single-family maintenance and a lot of single-family management. So um, I, what I've done in, since we last saw each other was I've built a flipping business now, and we're doing about two homes a month. And then we still have the rental business, but the, the flipping business generates a lot of cash. So in, in real estate, liquidity is sometimes an issue, and it's good to have a lot of liquid. So now I have a big engine of liquid that's generating money for me, so I don't have to worry about the rentals as much. It's definitely a, a smarter way to do business. So, yeah, you said you smartened up, but what inspired that change? Was it Were you having problems doing single-family rentals? Well, no. I mean, there's... It, there isn't a problem with doing it, but you know, would you rather have a cash flow of two thousand dollars a month or thirty thousand dollars a month? You know, what's more comfortable to run? Would you rather run a business on two grand a month, or would you rather have twenty grand or thirty grand? You'd rather have well, I'd rather have twenty or thirty grand. Well, absolutely, it's easier. You know, you can actually go to a seminar if you want. You can fly to Hawaii. You can. You can, you know, upgrade your your lifestyle if you want. You can do so many more things with uh, that kind of cash flow. You know, you can hire employees. You can pay your back office. You can actually do. You can actually build a business with that kind of cash flow versus two thousand dollars a month. Two thousand dollars a month, or getting a hundred bucks a door. You'll eventually kill yourself, and you'll need a job or a business to subsidize you if you keep going that way because the rental houses. Single-family homes don't cash flow very well. Okay, so what you've talked to me about vision. So has this changed with your vision? What is your vision? What's my vision? That's which part? I mean, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts with some of this stuff, Sean. Which part? So let's talk about your business vision, your vision for your real estate company. Okay, well, my vision, my real estate company right now is pretty simple. We're doing we're doing two homes a month in Winnipeg right now, so we're buying two every month, and, and that logic would say we should be selling two every month. And then my vision is I want to expand to the U.S., so we'll probably open up a U.S. city. I'm looking at a couple cities in Texas right now, so we'll start flipping in Texas and then get a couple cities going. Uh, we're starting to get into the seminar business a little bit, um, doing a bit of speaking, just released a book. So I'm starting to really build uh, you know, a bit of a coaching business as well. So there's lots of parts to the real estate business, and it really turns into a nicely well-rounded uh, business after a while when you start having all these components. Sure. So the book is the main reason why you're here today, and I want to get to that. But just to get some real estate value from you, let's talk about flipping houses. So let's start with how do you go <coughs> in and get out in 30 days or 60 days or 90 days? Okay. Uh, well, well, I think I think flipping, flipping is is a retail game, and I think lots of people get into flipping or they'll start flipping houses, and they just decide, well, I know how to paint walls and I know how to fix a kitchen, so I'll just get out there and start flipping, and that's not really the right idea. The right idea is um, you need to be very good at buying. You need to make your money on the buy, and if you buy well, you can screw everything else up and still make a lot of money. So what I do when I'm buying, I make sure I'm buying at 45 to 60 cents on the dollar. I renovate to 75 cents. And then depending on how I'm financing, it'll cost me 10 or 15 cents to do a transaction. And then I'll take home 10 to 15 pennies, which is very good. When you're looking at $100,000, $200,000. So yeah, or 300 even, you know. So how have you set yourself up so that you're able to find these properties to a month um, in Winnipeg every single month. So how, how does your deal flow work? What's the structure there? 
Well, the, the key with deal flow is the biggest one is networking. If you have a big network and you know you're going to real estate networking events, I just uh, I just became one of the organizers of a group in Winnipeg called Spin. You know, you spoke at Spin, and Spin is a group where uh, it stands for Strategic Property Investors Network, and we get together uh, 70, 80 investors, however many it is, and we network once a month. And there's a couple speakers, and you know we serve cookies and things like this, and people come out, and you just talk and meet people. And uh, when you know 60 or 70 investors in town, there's always somebody buying and there's always somebody selling. That's one way to get deals. Another way is I like to cold call realtors. You know, I know a lot of realtors. That's a good one. Another one is you can do some private advertising online on Kijiji or Craigslist. You know, that works. Um, you know, you can do bandit signs where you're stapling signs to telephone poles. You can, you can do flyers. You can do uh, wholesalers and bird dogs where you have other people out there. You're paying to find deals. There's so many ways to find deals, and the tr truth is you need all of these ways to bring you two good deals or three or however many deals a month. I was talking to a guy in Chicago and L.A. two weeks ago. And he's doing two deals a week, you know, so that's eight a month, eight flips a month. That's To me, that's, that's, that's cool, you know, but... That's just a bigger organization. He's in a bigger city. Chicago is significantly bigger than Winnipeg, so they have the inventory to do that kind of business. Yeah, and before we started this call, uh, you called me on the phone and you were talking about you do more actions, you get more results, and you see a lot of people who are, you're telling them this is exactly what to do, but they're not doing that. So why do you think they're not taking the action? Well, I think the biggest thing with, uh, with most people is most people don't have formal sales training. You know, I, I quit my job three times in my life and said, I'm going to strike out and be an entrepreneur. The first two times I failed, and then the third time I actually was able to swim like a duck because I had sales training. And when you get into sales training, you understand that your actions equal your results, and more actions, uh, the, the more actions you do every day that are the right actions, you're more likely to get a sale and make money. And realistically, buying buying houses is selling. You're selling that vendor on why they should sell to you. Okay. So it comes down to selling, Sean. It's all about selling, and most people can't sell. That's the biggest one. Well, since we're on the topic of selling, before we get into your book, what are just some of the, what are the core lessons that you got from selling that you apply in your real estate business? Well, I think I think what it's kind of what we're talking about here is. You know, we got actions, and you know, if it's, for example, if we're talking about selling on the phone, every number you dial is an action, and the calls lead to conversations, the conversations lead to meetings, the meetings lead to closes, and the closes lead to dollars. So when you understand that there's a process, and you know, if you have, if you call, let's say, ten realtors a day. And you ask them, hey, what else do you have for sale? Or if you call 10, you know, if you're calling 10 of anything a day or 50 of anything, when I was in sales, I made 50 calls a day. I made sure I made 50 calls a day. And if I did 50 calls a day, I would make somewhere around $200,000 a year. And that was the key. That's the whole business. It's one simple action. Get on the phone, start calling people, start grinding, start pounding the pavement. And just from those 50 calls, the math says you're going to have 10 conversations and you're going to book two meetings. You're going to book 10 meetings a week. The 10 meetings a week, you're going to close four of them. Four closes is worth whatever it is to your pocket. That's how, that's how sales works. It's a science and an art. <laughs> All right. And so that's one of the key lessons with actions. But what are another two? Let's say you have three core actions that you apply here. So uh, what would those lessons be from from sales experience? Uh, well, you know, you can't make anybody ever do something they don't want to do. You know, that's another thing, another big lesson I learned when I was selling was, you know, you can't close every deal, you can't close every guy, and you, you can't make somebody do something, you can't force someone to buy. You know, so you have to be prepared to let people go. And when they're, when they're not there to buy, and you know, you do your job, and you ask for the business, you ask for the clothes, and if they're not prepared to buy and you know truly you 
you find the reasons why, then you have to let them go and be okay with it. When I started, I was too aggressive and I wanted every single deal every single time. And that created a lot of stress. And now, so now you're picking and choosing. Well, it's just a numbers game, Sean. I mean, you know, you make sure if your actions are high, you don't care if the guy buys or not because you have such high actions that the math is going to take care of itself. You know, that's what business is all about. Like, businesses, you see lots of guys get into business and they just don't have high enough actions to support themselves and that's why they're not, they're not making it. It just comes straight down to actions and marketing and attracting and getting all these actions out there and being in the market and being active. I, tr I want to be one of the most active guys. I have the best, I have really great contractors because I'm active, I keep them active. I have good relationships with realtors and they give me good deals because I'm active and they know I'm a repeat buyer. It's all about activity. And the more activity you do, the more income you generate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the activity gives you deals and the deals. And it's the same with investors. You know, I got repeat investors that are investing over and over and over again. And I just attracted, uh, you know, I have grown my investor base by a lot because of the activity. The activity is what people are attracted to. You know, I've had investors say to me, oh, I've had lots of guys talk to me about flipping a house or buying a rental property jointly in a joint venture, and they choose me because they can see I'm making a business out of it, and I'm active. I'm more active. Like, we're not here to flip one house. We're here to flip hundreds. So, yeah, you're, you're going in with a bigger vision. You have more activity. Absolutely. Absolutely. More activity. That's what wins. Before we get into the book, which is going to be the core today, we'll spend the next half on that. What do you look for when you're looking for in a seller? What are you looking for in a seller uh, to buy a flip? Well, you want you want someone who's motivated to sell. So the best is unwanted property. You know, if somebody has a property they don't want, you know, if they're let's say grandma dies and grandma willed the house to their grandson or granddaughter and they don't want this house and they have no intentions of cleaning it or fixing it, that's an ideal customer. Another one would be, you know, um, there's death, divorce, downsizing, the three Ds, uh, where people are in a situation where they must sell and they must sell today. That's the best situation because then you can come in and you can buy today because, you know, I'm in the business of buying and I need to find people who want to sell right now. I think what a lot of investors do is they try to bark up the wrong tree and they'll try to negotiate or write offers with people who are, are not motivated. Your job is to find these people with problems and solve their problems. And that way you can get the deal today. Yeah, and absolutely. And I absolutely. You and I started doing real estate at the same time. You went on to progress with it. And I think the fundamental mistake that I made in the beginning was that I was looking at properties without motivated sellers. So I didn't have as much room to negotiate as you did on the price. Well, real estate price doesn't matter in real estate though, Sean. You know, that's that's one of the key fundamentals is the price that you're buying at. You know, in flipping it's a little more important, but realistically the price doesn't matter. What's what's more important is the terms. The terms are very important. And um you know, the price at the end of the day is not the biggest thing. You know, I've had deals where I can I can force them so good or I can repurpose them or I can do some something to really create a lot of equity and a lot of money just by doing a few um, simple tricks like, you know, turning a single family into a duplex. In some areas, a single family is worth more. In some areas, a duplex is worth more. If you're able to move it from one side to the other, what you pay on one side doesn't really matter. So you're just talking about the value. So terms yeah, value. As well. Yeah, let's we'll talk about value. You're grabbing value, not just buying below market value, but finding another use. Well, that's the key, Sean. That's the whole, that's the whole enchilada is value. Chase value, don't chase dollars. We don't care about the price. We care about the value. You know, if, if we're buying uh, something for a million dollars, you don't care if it's a million dollars if it's worth five. You know, and that's, that's, that's the same principle with raising money. If you have an actual good deal with actual profit and it's actually undervalued and you can actually prove it, raising money is no problem. 
because there's actual value. But so many people are hung up on price. Who cares about price? I don't care. All I care about is value. Because you can get more value and you can attract the money. Value gets you everything. Gets you everything in life, baby. If, you, if you're dressed well, that's value. If you show up on time, that's value. You know, if you're, if you're well-spoken, that's value. You want to give as much value to people in every way as possible, and that's what allows you to run a good business. And if, you, if you're a real estate investor having your sophisticated investment proposal, which we talked about in our last interview. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something you definitely need when you're starting out. Recently, in the last, I don't know, eight, nine months, I haven't really used it much because I, my brand just does all the selling. I don't have to pull out this binder every time, or I haven't pulled it out in probably a year because my brand and uh, my videos and my pictures, the proof's in the pudding. People just see it and they get it. It's a little bit easier than having this binder. When you're at the beginning, you've got to pull that binder out and really prove yourself that you have a good business plan and you're not a total idiot. And show that you're a step or several steps above the competition. Well, yeah, above the other guys who think that they can do real estate. There's lots of guys who think they can do it, but there's only a very few percentage points of people that can actually do it. All right. So let's, let's move in or let's flip into your book. Now, can you show us the book? Do you have it with you? Yeah, I got a copy right here. All right, so the book... Go ahead. Money People Deal is the book. So why did you write Money People Deal? Yeah, Money People Deal, I wrote it, I wrote it for two reasons. Well, in my business, there's two types of customers. There's two, peop two types of people that work with me. Um, generally, I'm, I'm in a, a marketer position where I'm dealing with investors all the time. And investors are other investors. And there's two types of investors. There's uh, people who want to be active investors and people who want to be passive investors. And for the active investor, this book is a great money-raising tool because it will teach them how to do joint ventures. It teaches them how to play the game. I call the game money, people, deal because those are the three things you need to do business, any business, whether it's cheeseburgers at McDonald's or it's you know flipping houses or rental properties. You need to understand how money, people, and deals work and how to put them together. And then on the other side is for the passive investor, it's a great tool to let uh, passive investors know how the business works and why they should be investing and who to invest with and what to look for. Okay, so what is Money People Deal? So you said there are these three portions. How do they work together? Okay, well, I look at it as a triangle, you know. It's like, it's like this. It's a triangle. And there's three parts of the triangle, three sides. You know, one side is money, one side's people, and one side's deals. If you only have one of the three, you're not making much money. You know, if you just have deals, you're a realtor, you're a wholesaler, you're a bird dog. Those people are worth, you know, $5,000 or less per deal. If you're just a contractor and you have people or you just have a team, well, you're not worth very much because you don't have deals and you don't have money. That's not really a business either. Contractors don't make much. You know, these guys drive around in trucks. They have cell phones and trucks. That's all you need to be a contractor. They don't necessarily make a lot of money. The next one is money. If you just have money, you're not making much. At the bank, they pay you less than 1% for your money. They'll pay, you know, if you go to a credit union, you might get 4%, but you're not making money if you only have money. So money is worthless. People are worthless. Deals are worthless. They're all worthless on their own. But when you put the three together, that's where you make a lot of cash. You know, you're able to assemble money, people, and deals into a McDonald's or into a flip or into a real estate company. You know, Donald Trump was very good at putting money, people, and deals together. Henry Ford did it. Steve Jobs. All the great entrepreneurs in history have put these three elements together. And what I outline in my book is these are the three elements, how to put them together, in what order do you assemble them, what's the easiest way to do it, what's the hardest way to do it, why you need to do it, and you know, if you do, if you have one of the three parts, you're making a couple thousand bucks. If you have all three, you know, you're making on a, a small house, you're making 20, 30, 40, 50 grand because you can put the three together. So how do you put those three together? Where do well, you start? Well, that's, that's tough. I mean, you know, for myself, when I started, 
I figured out very quickly that if I had a good deal and if I had a good team and I could prove it with a binder, getting the money was not too hard. You know, but nowadays I'm in the position where I have too much money, too much investors, and now I have money and people and I'm always looking for deals. So the, the rule is if you have two of the three, the third one comes. If you have one of the three, you're not getting anything. You know, if you have one of the three, you're degraded to the lowest commodity price possible for whatever it is you do. When you start having two of the three, you start to have power, and when you have all three, you're making a lot of money and you have a good brand. So, so when was that transition from you having the first two, which was deals and people, to having money and people now? Well, I think the tipping point was when I really started to build my brand. I really smartened up. I started building a brand. I started blogging. I started documenting my success. You know, I started doing a lot of social media. I started winning real estate awards. And all that together into um, you know, a soup or a gumbo, all these, all these elements coming together is what's created a brand. And the brand has attracted a lot of money. And the money now is it's a fixture in the business. It's there. It's, uh, it's waiting. It's just waiting because money understands that when there's, a, when there's a good opportunity, the money comes every time. When people know that they can make very good money somewhere, they come. They just come in droves. They get in line. And actually, I have a lineup. Like if somebody new wants to come work with me, they have to get in line. Well, that's a great position to be in. So why do people need to read and understand money, people, and deal, the three sides of the triangle? Well, for two reasons. I mean, if you want to be act, an active investor, you have to learn the rules of the game and how it's played. So that's, that's one reason. You know, if you want to be active, you have to learn how to assemble these things. The other side is if you want to be a passive investor, you also have to understand how the game works so that you can find the right person to partner with and, you know, make money while you sleep. So there's, there's two sides to it. If you want to be a, an entrepreneur or a passive investor, it makes a lot of sense to read a book like this and really get an understanding of how the system works. And, you know, there's also some great mindset stuff in there and also some great specific real estate, um, you know, tips, tricks, and rules in there. So I think it's a really good, well-rounded book. Yeah, so you mentioned there are some mindset things in there, but so what are some of those mindset things that people need to know? Well, I think, I think most of it applies to... Uh, you know, entrepreneurs or active investors, and one of them is, you know, for example, the luxury of no options. You know, I got myself, I really started becoming successful in business when I got myself into a, a no option situation where I had my back to the wall, and I'd screwed up enough times to put myself in a situation where I must succeed. You know, the luxury of no options, people, people are unsuccessful because they have too many options. You know, you look at, uh, you probably know the band Green Day, right? Green Day dropped out of school when they were 16. They only could become a punk rock success. That was their only option. You know, uh, Foo Fighters did the same thing. Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters. He dropped out of school when he was 16, and he said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I have no option." And he was in Nirvana, one of the biggest bands of all time. And then he went went to Foo Fighters. Very successful people come from these no options environments. Yep, well, that's a great that's a great example. Another one is, you know, Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump. His his father died when he was eleven, and he had to go start sweeping floors at construction sites. That's just the way it was, you know. And then he became a carpenter. Then he started building homes. Then he had a home building company. Then he got into apartments. And then when Donald was young, his his father had an empire of apartment buildings. But it all started with uh, sweeping floors, carpentry spec homes, home building company, apartment buildings, and it started with that natural progression. Yeah, and it sounds like there's a natural progression for every business. So you had a progression, I have a progression, the next person who's doing this has a progression. What was yours like? Well, I did mine in the dumbest way possible, Sean. I did it backwards. I thought that I was going to start out in um, you know, building commercial buildings or development. That's a big rookie mistake if you're in real estate. Don't try to jump into development. You're too stupid for it. I'm too stupid. 
you don't have the experience, you don't have the cash, just stay away from that. Um, I think that one thing that people get into trouble with real estate is they they get seduced by rookie uh, mistakes. I think one is development. If you're starting, stay away from development. Uh, one thing I did was I bought a fire burn building. Stay away from that. Um, you want to keep things as simple as possible. And one thing I did was I loaded myself up with too much debt, bought, getting a whole bunch of JV rentals, and I also um, tried to be a developer at the beginning. And realistically, development is an end game. It's not a beginning game. And so many people get into real estate, they want to be sexy. They want sexy deals that everyone's going to get excited about. And you don't want to start out with something sexy. You want something boring. Get something that's run-of-the-mill, easy, not a lot of moving parts, not a lot of chance for failure. Get an easy couple deals going. Get a deal flow going. And then get it, as you get smarter and as your experience grows, make it more complicated and more sexy. Or maybe not. Maybe just keep it simple. You know, McDonald's has served the same hamburger for the last, what is it, 60, 70 years. Why change it? That hamburger, they've sold billions of hamburgers, those, you know, those little tenth of a pound hamburger. People still buy them. So you started Complex, and then what happened? Well, I started Complex, and it got too complex. So I stripped the business down. I made it simple. And now my business is a dream to run. I work less hours. I make more money. Um, it's easier. More investors want to work with me. My brand is better. Everything's better when it's simple. When you start making it complicated, uh, you know, it's funny. I was talking to some investors um, a couple of days ago, and they're excited about lease options. And lease options are a great tool. It's a rent-to-own kind of thing. And, you know, lease options are great, but if you're going to do lease options, be the best at lease options. I've chosen to become very good at flipping because it, it resonates with me. It resonates with my skill set. Um, I've got a lot of experience in rentals. I've got a lot of experience in buying. So I've naturally progressed into a flipper. Um, you know, you could turn into a wholesaler and get really good at that. Just pick one thing, just one thing, and get really good at it. Don't try to reinvent the wheel and get good at, you know, get mediocre, actually, at a lot of things. Because you'll never be the best. You want to be the best at something. And as you progress, then what happens? So let's say you become the best at wholesaling. Then what? Would you say you can branch out? Could you automate the business? Could you put people in place? Well, if you became the best at wholesaling, you'd have a lot of deals. You would be making a lot of cash, you know. I think that if you get good at wholesaling, nat the natural progression is to get into flipping houses because now, you know, you've got, you've got money, you know how to find a good deal. You have the hardest part of the business down. You know, so there's always, there's always a progression. Actually, I want to do another book. I want to do the progression of, of uh, real estate. How do you progress from one level to the next and what to do because people get into this, uh, people get into real estate. I think there's a five-step process. You start out with bird dogging which is just finding, finding leads and just passing leads to people for dollars. Then you get into wholesaling where you're negotiating those contracts and selling them. Then the third step is flipping, fourth step is rentals, and fifth step is kind of where I'm at where you just sit on a huge pile of money and you're just kind of funding deals. You know, so the step, if, I tried to get in at step four, that's where I tried to start. And even worse, I tried to get into a development, into a rental, and that's the hardest thing. Trying to go, you know, zero to 60 in a car, you're going to hurt yourself. If you try to run a marathon without doing any training, you'll have a heart attack. So, but that was your no option situation. Well, I had no option, so I had to become successful at it, and I did. But then I found the easier way to do things, the more fun way to do things, the way that makes more cash today. And that's, that's, the, that's the lesson is don't try to jump in at step four or don't try to jump in at step five. Try to start out step one. Crawl, walk, run. That's what you need to do. Don't, don't try to just run. You'll have a heart attack. Yeah, exactly. If you're a good bird dog, you'll you'll know what, what a good deal is, and then you'll know how to get into wholesaling, and then you know what a good deal is. You can go into flipping. Make them, you can prove to people that you've made money in wholesaling. You can find these good deals, and you're letting them slip through your fingers, so now you can raise money and get into flipping. And then once you're good at flipping and you've got too much cash because now you're making a ton of money, you get into buying rentals because now you have to put that money somewhere, right? 
well, you got to do something with the cash, right? You got to buy some some rentals. Now you're buying rentals, and then you get to the point at the end game where you know you're not doing much of anything, but you really just have a huge pile of cash, and you're just funding deals. And it's all maintenance at that point. Well, it's it's a you have a full out business at number five, but you have other people doing everything. So, you know, my actions when we were talking last, I was doing a lot of actions every day, like small daily ten dollar an hour actions. And I was almost getting to the point of burning out on those ten dollar actions. Now I don't do I only do actions that make thousands of dollars an hour. You have to really figure out where you're spending your time every day. You know, I try to I try to only do high leverage activities. And so did you monitor your what happened? You were at the point of burning out. Did you monitor your activities and say, I will not do this? What happened there? Well, I smartened up, I hired a coach. I started hiring coaches, I started getting mentors, and these guys said, look, you're doing it stupid, you're doing it backwards, stop it. I said, stop doing it, stop doing it like this, do it like we did. We made money like this, you're going to do it like us, don't reinvent the wheel. That's my message, don't reinvent it. Find a guy who's done it and say, teach me how to fish and fish just like him. Don't try to reinvent the fishing rod, don't try to come up with a fancy net. You know, don't don't be dynamite fishing. Just learn from the fishermen. Learn how to fish, and you will be good. You'll be fed for life. And then you can move to the next thing and the next thing. Well, then you start and you go learn from another fisherman, right? If you want, if you think you've mastered the art of fishing, then you go to the next. But you always need a coach. You always need the mentor. You always need a guy showing you, or you will kill yourself. People, you see guys do it all the time. They make a ton of money in one industry. Like let's say I make a lot of money in real estate. Then I go throw it into IT or internet. Why would I do that? You know, lots of guys that they think they're the king of the world, they do really well in one thing, then they try to get into the next thing. They have no coach, no mentor, no knowledge, and they lose it all. Don't do that. Just get someone who knows how to do it, pay him his fee or work for free and figure out how you can get the knowledge to actually run your business properly instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. It's the craziest thing. Don't reinvent the wheel. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. As I've been reading, uh, sorry to take this away from you and go back to this, but I've been reading a lot of uh, Richard Branson's books to see how he built Virgin as, as a multi-industry company. And the way that he always has done it is to find people who are smarter than he is in every different industry and then he partners with them. Absolutely. So he's working for free. I think Robert Kiyosaki, he says work for free. When you're young, you work to learn and not to earn. Yeah. I said the same message. You know, I worked for free uh, to learn how to raise money. I worked for free on and off as a volunteer for two years before I was hired by the company I was volunteering for. And I became very good at raising money. It's, it's one of those things where you have to put in blood, sweat, tears, time or money. You know, you're either putting blood, sweat and tears in just being ignorant and doing it, which I've done. You put in time and you work for free, which is another option. Or the other one is you pay a guy his consulting fees and get him to just skip you through the process. So nothing in life is free. You got to pay in one of those three ways. You want to pay in blood, sweat and tears, time or money. I used to do a lot of blood, sweat and tears. I used to do a lot of time and now what I do is I pay with money because I find it to be less painful and faster. And that's why, that's why you're showing up at these places with Arnold Schwarzenegger and J.P. Fox and all these other great people that are your new mentors. Yeah, exactly. You know, pay. You know, you pay twelve hundred bucks, thirteen hundred bucks, two grand, five grand, ten grand, whatever it costs to learn how to do it properly. And then once you've learned, you know, that's your asset. That's your asset for life. You know how to do it. That's the that's the true that's the true value, you know. If you read um, if you read uh, Richest Man in Babylon, have you read that book? I read it once. I, that was years ago, though. Well, they say in the book, you know, if you had a choice between a clay tablet of knowledge and a pot of gold, which would you choose? I said the clay tablet. Well, this is how it works. The guy who chooses the gold ends up with nothing, and the guy who chooses the clay tablet gets the gold. Because when you know how to do stuff and you're smart, that's how you earn money.
But when you just choose the gold, you don't know how to take care of the gold, you'll trade that gold for something that makes no sense, and you will be without the gold. And that's the same you know. thing as, as chasing the money today. You know, if you yep. chase the money in real estate, you chase the money Ch in sales. Chase the value. Go for the value. Don't go for the money. You know? If you look at your, you know, most people are working 10, 20, 30 dollar an hour jobs, whatever they make. Let's just say it's 50 bucks an hour. So it's $100,000 a year. They're making 50 bucks an hour. And the question is, at the end of the day, what did you get? You know, if you made, let's say, 1000 bucks a day or 500 bucks a day, at the end of the day, if you only have money, you have a huge problem. You better have, at the end of the day, I would rather have $0 in my pocket and knowledge. Or I would rather have, like one thing I do is I make sure at the end of the day, no matter what, I've built my brand somehow. That's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on the end of the day, I want to have a brand. I want to have knowledge. I want to learn something new. I need experience. I want to make sure I have these things. I want to make sure I'm doing what I love. I want to make sure I have these things at the end of the day so that whether you make money or you don't make money, you're still ahead. You're always getting ahead. The guy who goes out every day and he's, let's say, shoveling dirt or something, at the end of the day only has money and he's going to be poor forever because he's not building his other assets. Now, would you say there's a compound effect that comes into play here when you're acquiring knowledge and the skills? Absolutely. It's huge, you know. When you start acquiring knowledge and skills, you get smarter and smarter and smarter and you start working less and less and things become higher leverage and you can start really doing some cool things because you've really figured out how to do high leverage activities versus low leverage activities. You know, the reason why most entrepreneurs fail is they're running around doing low leverage activities all day and at the end of the day all that ten dollar an hour labor they're trying to save only adds up to twenty, thirty grand a year. They burn out and then they have to go back to their job. You want to be doing high leverage activities. That's what it's all about. Things that bring you, you know, I, one thing I'm really a big fan of is intentional congruence. I want to make sure if I'm working an hour, I'm working on 10 things at once passively while I'm actively working. It gets you ahead. And that means you have your team of contractors, your team of realtors, or the people that bring you deals. And you, do you have an online team now? Uh, you know what? Real estate is a pretty primitive business. Online, I find, is, is something that is going to come probably in the next year and a half for me. Uh, I do I I do have um, people who do videos for me. I have people who do um, you know graphics and maybe some websites and stuff. But I'm not really into online marketing right now. I mean, it's I prefer to stay focused in uh, the primitive bricks and sticks. And then as we get more complex, maybe get into online. But I find that real estate's a game where it's low number of sales, high high number of dollars per sale. Online is generally um, low dollars per sale, high volume. So it's a totally different game. I don't really want to get into it right now. All right. So that might be coming down the road. But today, the book is called Money People Deal. And where can people go to find that book? Absolutely. Well, they can go to moneypeopledeal.com and order a copy, and I'll gladly send it out to them. It's going to be on Amazon, too, in the next uh, probably week or so. And then, uh, yeah, Amazon will drop ship it anywhere in the world. So moneypeopledeal.com is where you get it today. In the future, it'll be Amazon. Yeah. One more thing. Uh, before we go here, I want to talk about writing this book. Now, you had to leverage some experience. You said now you pay to get that experience. How did you do that with your book? Well, absolutely. I mean, Sean, here's the thing. If you're going to write a book, where do you start? You know, most people start with page one and they just start writing. And realistically, that's the worst mistake a rookie can make with writing a book. I hired a, a guy named Raymond Aaron. He's wrote a couple successful books, uh, some chicken soup books. He's written uh, some other books that you know are big, big, well-branded books. So he's he's written a few books. He knows what he's doing. And Raymond showed me the correct process on how to write a book. You know. Here's a funny thing they say when you're writing a book is you want to spend six months on the title and two weeks on the book. And I wrote my book. It took me two days in Mexico to put it together, to actually write the book. And then the fulfillment took six months, you know, all the graphics and the editing and the typesetting and stuff. 
you really want to, if you want to write a book, you should probably write a book that advances your career and don't try to win the book lottery with writing the next Fifty Shades of Grey or something. Don't try to make it, don't try to make it about the art. Make it about your career first. And then once, you, once you're doing well, you can write as many art books as you want and uh, try to get all fancy with it. Yeah, so then you can later, later you can do different things, but now you're an expert or you, you're more perceived as an expert when you have a book or a title behind your name as well. Yeah, well, I think, you know, I've heard from people, uh, the gentleman who wrote Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus said, he has a PhD, he said, writing a book is worth more than my PhD. You know, and if, if that's the case, why would you go to university? Skip university, just write a book about something you're passionate about and start getting in the business there. You know, that's the way I look at it. I think it's, it's smarter to, to do that high leverage activity than to go into a low leverage activity where you're sitting in a classroom for four or five years. You know, we're, we, live in a, we live in such a crazy world these days where, you know, a published author is worth more than a degree. You know, 50 years ago, the degree was worth a lot. But even so, uh, a published book, again, your degree doesn't mean much. People want to see publications. PhDs, they don't care about you until you publish stuff. It's all about the written word. People want to see that. They want to, they want to feel the paper. That's one thing they want to feel. They want to feel the paper. They want to smell it. They want to touch it. This means it's real. When you don't have this, you know, it, you're you're pretty much a nobody. It's a big deal to have a book. People love it. Perfect. All right, so that was kind of the process for you. So thanks again for being on the show. We got the new book. You can find it at moneypeopledeal.com. And thanks so much, Stefan, for being on the show today. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. And be sure to like, share, and comment below. Subscribe to this channel for more interviews. And if you want to go further and be live on the interviews, you can go to mmt.tv forward slash live to find out how. Like on Facebook and follow on Twitter to ask your questions. And be sure to get on the mailing list. Go to mmt.tv to get access to all the things that are not contained in these interviews. All the links are mentioned below. And until next time, break the rules, change the game, and be a rock star.